Welcome to a new video. I'm going to show you today how to use a few new brushes that I created. I'm really excited about these. Um, I honestly, I have no idea what I'm doing when I'm creating brushes. I literally just am like going in this panel and doing things through trial and lots of error and just seeing what changing these things does to change the behavior of the brush and sometimes it doesn't do anything and I have no idea what this bar is for but it's been a really good learning curve um, and I have created some brushes that I'm excited to share with you that I am pretty happy with for getting the techniques that I like to use to make super realistic looking watercolor in the Procreate app for an iPad Pro. So to start we're going to choose this nice deep green and the Hard Edger 2. To get started, I'm just going to draw a little stem here and start drawing leaves. And this is a very pressure sensitive brush. So um, let's see, we'll go off of the stem here and you can see I'm um, here. <laughs> I don't know if you can see because you can't really see me applying pressure, but it does uh, vary a lot. Anyway, what I'm going to do is just start making these leaves and it really, I mean, don't worry about being a perfectionist here or super filling them in. Um, it's definitely going to look strikingly different from what you start with. Just making a branch with a bunch of leaves. The nice thing about this brush is that um, as you go through the middle, you can create your high pressure point to give it a little more fill to the leaf, but then you can still taper off by applying less pressure at the end to get a nice tip up here, which I really, I don't like when you have like a rounded edge leaf or you, you're just not able to create the um, pointed shape that you want. So that's something that I try to make sure that all of the brushes that I've been making taper. Um, so here then, I'm just going to finish off some of this to give it more of a defined shape. Um, nothing crazy, but just kind of drawing in some stems here. All right, and what I'm gonna do now is swipe over on the layer, tap duplicate, uh, and then I'm going to change the layer settings to normal from multiply, and then tapping on it again, this black menu comes up, I tap alpha lock, and then I'm gonna to go to a true white color and tap the layer again and hit fill layer. And so what this does is it creates a white version of what you drew with all the same levels of opacity. And what we want is for this to be totally, mostly filled in. Actually, this is a case where we don't want it completely filled in. So I'll leave it off so you can see. I'm going to duplicate this six times, maybe? Merge it all together. Let's try one more. And so, as you can see, because the brush doesn't fill in in the middle, the layer didn't either, but it did fill in slightly more in the middle of the leaves than the um, green did. All right, so then I'm gonna move up one of these layers in between these two. And this is, I'm gonna just show you 
how I stumbled upon this technique. So I'm gonna turn back on my texture and all of these, and then this mask layer, I'm going to tap select, and then I'm gonna go on this layer in between. So normally what I do is I work on the, the working painting layer, and this would be this first one here. But right now I'm gonna work in between and maintain the integrity of the outlines that I originally painted. Now I'm gonna go back to my original color, and this time, instead of the hard edger, I'm gonna select the spiky wet bleed, and just my brush size and brush size and opacity, just playing around, and then I'm gonna go in and start filling in some of the, the leaves a little bit. And here you can start to see, you really lose that transparent part in the middle for now. And this is where if you want to add some, some colors, let's, see, let's do the stem here. And if you want to mix colors, which is always fun, you can do that. So we'll add this lighter green, kind of brighten it up a bit. So what I'm doing now, you can see it looks, you know, kind of messy, kind of, kind of crappy. So I'm going to go to the smudger and make sure I'm still on the spiky wet bleed. And now just kind of move stuff around. And sometimes I like to get really aggressive and draw in a lot. When you, um, when you're smudging, you can basically move the pigment completely off of what you have selected and turn it back to transparent and that's what I will be trying to do in a couple of these places especially here in some of the middle of the leaves where we had that transparent spot I'm gonna get it back to that level and I'll even go so far as to grab the eraser and erase bits of pigment um, I just want to get a lot of color and and opacity variation in the leaves. Now I'm kind of at the point where I want to check in and see what it's looking like. And I'm not sure about this big gaping hole that I have when I don't have it in any of the other places. So we're just going to have to see how that looks. So I'll tap the deselect. And this, if this is the look you're going for, 100% you can leave it. But what I was doing when I discovered this way of painting is I went to see how the layer looks without the top layer. And to me this looks like super killer exactly what I want in my watercolor. The only thing again is this little bit of, of complete transparent, transparency. So I'm gonna go back into this second layer, the working layer, with my smudge, make it really small so I don't go outside of the lines. So that's kind of, that's the new magic. I'm super excited about this technique and really love just getting some new variation. And from here you can um, go in with the hard edger and, and bring the size and opacity down. And like I do in some of my other videos, you can go in around the edges and kind of create this like hard edge um, pigment bleed kind of situation. Um, or you can leave it as is and have it just be soft and delicate. I think it's a, a really good look either way.